Hey, Justin, um, for somebody that's been through everything you have in your career, in particular, the injury last year and coming all the way back now and having all the uncertainty about the season, being here as you try and make your return, just how, how difficult has it been to, uh, to try to handle all that and everything that's happening right now? Uh, I'll say it's a little difficult, but um, I'm a man of faith and I'm a man of God, and I just know that God has a plan for me and my teammates, and I just handle each day at a time, take it one step at a time, and um, just trying to come back from my injury and just getting healthier, stronger by the day, just starting to feel more normal. And I know everything right now with whether we're going to play, whether we're not going to play, but I mean, I can't focus on that. Me or my teammates, we just have to focus on getting better as a team and an individual can help the team become better as a unit. Take each step. Each step. You have a percentage you feel like you're at right now? Would it be 100%? Um, I'll be 96. I would say 96. I like it. Thanks. <laughs> Tell us, Robin. Tell us, Robin. Hey Justin, good to see you're feeling well. Uh, I got two for you. First off, what was the what was what were your emotions like the first time you got to be back out there and practice again after such a long layoff? Um, a bunch of emotions, I would say. Uh, sadness that I missed last year. Just thought about all the time that I missed out last year. Uh, I there with my teeth laughing and playing ball again. Uh, uh, excited. Um, just a bunch of emotions going through my head. Uh, am I going to go out here and uh, tank it and get hurt again? Like those emotions always go through, but my trainers have done a good job helping me mentally going out there and just being able to play. Just go out there and do your very best. Forget about you ever hurt and just go out there and play like you, you're you normal because your knee's fixed and everything is healed and we've been through the training process and we've been through treatment process, rehab and everything. and We've done everything possible to out there and be successful. So I just got to go out there and play. And Elijah has done a good job with me mentally and doing that. And I, I give him kudos for that. So. And if uh, some decision makers came to you and said, Justin Hughes, tell us why you and K-State football want to play this season, what, what would you tell them? Um, me personally, I would say this is my final go round. And uh, to all seniors out there, I know it's been a hard road knowing if we're going to play or not. And I would just say for the seniors out there, we have one little round and don't take it from us or take a year away from this tragedy going on right now, pandemic or whatever. Um, I would say we want to play as we want to play as players everywhere in the nation. And we, we, we want to be able to do the thing we love safely. And so, Whatever it takes to do that, we would, we would love to do it. Scott Fritchman. Scott Talking to you and Elijah both uh, during the summer, you both have high expectations uh, for the, for this coming year, wherever, whenever you play football. Um, just what is the specialness with that relationship with Elijah, both coming from Tucker, Georgia, both six year seniors, the journey you guys have had together and just the things you want to accomplish this year together. It's very special. He's my brother. Will always be my brother. Uh, we actually live together now. Finally, we've been trying to get that together since we moved up here, but uh, it's just a special, it's a, another obstacle, another obstacle to get through for us to get to our goal. And we, we treat this obstacle just like any other, just, Another thing we got to get through to, to, to be successful and to reach the NFL. And it's been a dream of ours, each of ours, since we were little kids. And so we just uh, believe God is just testing us right now and testing our faith. And we just have to continue to be strong for each other, be strong for ourselves and, and motivate each other. And so we can have that big year that they've been wanting to have because it's, it's almost in our hand, it's almost in our grasp, and we just got to continue to go get that. Coach Kleiman, uh, just a little bit ago, mentioned that there were no positive cases for COVID in last week's testing. Uh, how fortunate you guys are. Just um, tell me about the protocols in place and how confident you are in the health personnel surrounding the team 
that uh, they make the right choices for you? Uh, we believe in our trainers. We we listen to everything they've they've done. They've done their research on the uh, entire virus, and they know a lot about it, and they read that, that information to us. And so we, we wear our masks, we wear our gaiters, we have our, like, um, plastic on our face mask, and we, we do each and all these things. Uh, we go to uh, meetings simultaneously. We don't have each everybody in one place at one time. Uh, we listen to all our coaches and trainers, and we, we, we believe in them, and we believe they have the knowledge to, to keep us safe, the knowledge to keep us from attracting the virus. And we're thankful to be in a state where it's not as bad as, say, or a New York or California, and we, we've done a great job at that. And that and hats off to my teammates for being disciplined to do that as well. So. All right, we got three time for three more. We'll go Braxton, Mitchell, and Karen. Go ahead, Braxton. Hey, Justin, man. Hope all's well for you. I got two for you real quick. Um, first one, really, um, you're, you're a leader in that locker room. If you could uh, just give us the pulse. What, what are guys, what are they thinking um, about this season? Obviously, I'm sure you're all eager to play. Just what are guys saying that the younger guys are – are having a unique learning experience and they're looking up to senior leadership. What are guys saying to you inside the locker room there? Um, I would just say it was a lot, it's a lot of eagerness about the situation right now. Guys want to know what's going on and when it's going to happen, like the decision basically. Um, they want to notice us. And we, I mean, we have to be patient because uh, they're coming up with answers and we, it's out of control right now. And so guys are just ready to know if we're going to play right now uh, the sprint, or we're gonna wait to next season. I would, I would uh, say that's the environment of the locker room right now. Um, we we've been preparing like we're gonna play September fifth or September twelfth, whatever that date might be. We're just gonna continue like that's gonna happen. We're gonna continue to be great and into each and every practice. I would say. And you guys, um, for your team, it's been a, a, a longer a off season. And I mean, you're going through the social justice things on campus now to go to, to COVID and wondering if you're going to play. Just what have you learned about um, having to deal with this? Again, a lot of people wouldn't be able to face it like you guys have. Just what have you learned about those guys next to you? Um, I would just say I'm more of learning, just knowing that I'm just reassuring that I, what I already know. Uh, we're a bunch of relentless guys that fight through adversity, Kansas State, where we're, we're mostly underdogs and we have to jump over hurdles to get to where we want to be, where we want to be on the field, on the field. And so we came across a couple obstacles off the field and we, we handled it as a team. We handled it as adversity well. And that's what we do. Coach Kleiman preaches it, preaches it all, all the time. We just got to win today. And so piece of grain of salt and we just, we just come out and get to work and, we go hard no matter what we do. We believe in each other and we take each other's back no matter what we got going on. So I will say that. Thanks, man. No problem. Mitchell Summers. Hey, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I got two for you. So I know you'd said that Kansas, of course, were in a better situation in comparison to other states. And you mentioned Texas specifically that, well, we're not having as many cases as Texas. But there will still be a state will be traveling to Texas and then two different times where Texas will be coming to Manhattan. So with that, the idea being that there is still an, an avenue for this team for an outbreak to happen again. So what are, what are the conversations with the guys? Are you guys scared about an outbreak happening again? Uh, I would say, like I said before, our trainers have done a great job of preaching us to how to stay safe and how to not be a close contact as far as the virus and, playing other teams, we have to either wear our gaiters like I'm wearing right now um, or wear the visor thing that's on our face mask. And I feel, they feel like that will lower the chances, lower the percentages of us attracting the virus. And that way we lower the cases, number of cases. And so that way we can have our entire team fully for the uh, full year, where whenever that may be. Um, we're doing a good job of that. <laughs> we was in the indoor yesterday, and guys wanted to take that mask off so bad. But we 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 held strong to you to do that, especially 
during the end of the season when it's getting kind of guys going to want to wear masks. And so uh, we're doing a good job with that. And we're not afraid at all. We just want to get out there and get get to it, really. And we're breathing, but I mean, it's always a struggle breathing through all during football. It's just another obstacle, like I've been saying. But um, we've done a good job with the protocol we have going on here, and we believe that we're doing the right thing. So we hope – all we can do is hope that the other teams are, will do the right thing. And things. for my, my other question, um, is it, isn't Jonathan Alexander one of your mates? Yeah. What was your opinion and the rest of the team's opinion whenever he decided to opt out? Um, he's, my opinion is he's doing whatever it takes that he feels is right with his family. You know, like each person that has and what they have going on and he was family. And I applaud him for nothing. That's a huge step. Some people may not make and they're afraid to make. And I applaud him for that. And that's the, that's the steps he, that he wants takes to keep his family safe and keeps, uh, his self safe. Cause he tested positive for it a couple of weeks ago. And so he feels like he wants to keep his family safe and he's not trying to put himself in that situation again. I completely understand. And we're behind him 100% no matter what. All right, last one here, Karen. Maybe. Can you hear Hello. Um, Justin, you kind of touched on it, but Coach basically said that early outbreak in June was a blessing in disguise because you saw how easy it could be transmitted, all of the, you know, retro, and it kind of gave everybody a new pursuit, you know, bear down and, and do what everyone tells you. Do you kind of feel that way, that experiencing that with the team kind of set you guys first where you are right now of, you know, no testing positive a couple weeks. Do you feel that kind of turn thing arc at that time kind of set the pace? Yeah, I feel like because we had a couple instances with guys a little traveling, going whatsoever, going places and being disciplined. And so we felt like when we tested positive, a bunch of guys tested positive and it was an outbreak here and we was like, man, it wasn't that many cases here before we got here, and now it's all these cases popping up. We have to be disciplined, guys, and it was just like a, a heads up to all the guys on the team when we got back that we if we want to do this thing real, so we got to we gotta do what we must to, to do what we want to do. And so we have to take the precautions that our trainers have get, given us, our coaches have preached us daily, putting a mask up, uh, staying six feet apart, social side of the complex, we, we've taken that guy that uh, starts the outbreak on the team. We're trying to prevent that from happening, anybody feeling bad and, and prevent anybody from getting hurt mentally and physically from this. An unusual way to bond. You have to be social distance, but you're all coming together for a cause. You feel that stuff that's happened has made this team closer? Oh, absolutely. We're, we're up here. We're up here. Uh, most of the time, it's kind of like our own bubble. We're up here all the time, and we go home to our own separate homes and film, and we're just doing the things that we need to, in order for us to get out there on the seat, uh, the field whenever we need to. And so we're doing a great job of that. And whenever we're in the locker room, we're having fun with each other, and the coaches have done a great job with that and just fun and still able to be in time. And so... Uh, entire staff has done a great job, and I applaud them for that. And it's to me because I'm a senior, and I want to get my senior season in. And so I, I really want to thank them for that.